Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, good morning. Good to be with you. Or listen, the truth is, it might be afternoon or evening for you. Um, whatever the case may be, today is the day before Easter Sunday where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I'm blessed to be in God's Word with you. Definitely feel like God's been... Um, kind of ordaining and orchestrating not just our timing in the book of Daniel, but the book of Daniel itself. It's been such a, a good and a rewarding time in God's word. I've had a lot of you uh, come up to me after the service or, you know, uh, connect via email and just say that um, Daniel's really blessed your heart. And so for sure excited um, to hear that. Today we're in verse 26 of Daniel chapter 9. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, and uh, we looked at the first half of verse 26. We're going to read today um, verse 26 all the way through verse 27. The Bible says, And after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off and shall have nothing, and the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood, and to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed, and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. And for half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate until the decreed end is poured out on the desolator. Well, we have been um, talking about how Daniel chapter 9 really is the epicenter for the timeline, the prophetic timeline for God and the children of Israel. Um, as a consequence of that, we start to really have a picture of God's working in the non-Jewish nations. And so remember, um, it was told Daniel that there would be 77 uh, periods of time for his people, and there was a list of things that would happen, um, bringing in ultimately righteousness, five things that um, were described to Daniel in the consummation of God's covenant promises with the nation of Israel. And, and so 69 of those seven-week periods, and remember that um, phrase seven-week refers to a seven-year period of time. So 69 of those seven-year periods of time is 483 years or uh, 173,880 days. And we checked this out in uh, yesterday's devotion, how from the time the decree went forth to rebuild Jerusalem to the coming of Messiah, 173,880 days, um, put us right at the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. And some of you brilliant mathematicians are thinking, well, wait a minute, there's one seven week period of time left. There's one uh, bank of seven years that's unaccounted for. If we have 69 and the um, angel said that there were 70, then what about that final seven-year period of time? Well, that's what we're reading about today in the second half of verse 26 and in verse uh, 27. There is in between. So in, in that little conjunction and, you know, we've got 69 seven-year uh, periods, we've got one final seven-year period. In between that time is the age of grace or the church age. Um, th that little conjunction, that little and there represents all of time from the crucifixion and ascension of Jesus Christ um, to ultimately the seven-year tribulation period. And to this point, uh, that has been almost 2,000 years. So you say, well, well, how does that work with this prophecy? Remember, this prophecy is dealing with God's covenant promises with the nation of Israel specifically. And his work among the Gentile nations would be ultimately revealed in the New Testament period and, you know, for sure in great detail through the Apostle Paul. Um, what we're looking at here is in this final seven-year period, there's going to be tribulation like the world has never seen before. There's going to be a covenant relationship that Israel makes with this one who is being talked about, the Antichrist, um, the one who is 
um, everything that is against Christ, the one who is possessed by the devil himself. There's a lot of description of the Antichrist in the book of Daniel. He is a very persuasive individual. He experiences some sort of physical calamity that he miraculously recovers from. He um, engages Israel in some seven-year covenant relationship, and then three and a half years into it, according to Daniel's prophecy, he commits the abomination of desolation, um, the sacrifices that had been renewed in the rebuilt temple will come to an end. That's what the abomination of desolation is. He, he proclaims himself as God incarnate and demands sacrifices be made to him. And then there's a desolation that comes with the flood. In other words, a great destruction um, and spiritual attack against the children of Israel. All of this is ultimately consummated in the second coming of Jesus Christ. And, you know, I've said this um, recently a number of times, we're not just living in the end times, we're living in the end moments. We're not just living in the last days, we're living in the last seconds. I think that that is true as we see so much of biblical prophecy coming to pass all around us. What should that compel us to do? Well, it should compel us to, with a, to live with an anticipation of the soon return of Jesus Christ. Um, my particular conviction is that before the Antichrist is revealed, the church is going to be raptured away. There's going to be this amazing biblical event called the rapture where those Christians who are present on the face of planet Earth at the time will be taken away in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and will be caught up in the air to be with the Lord forever. Uh, I want to encourage you today as we're really reflecting on his first coming and his resurrection, and just live today with an anticipation for his soon return again. And there's so much that happens when you live with that anticipation. It binds and connects your heart to God um, in a real time way. Uh, and not only that, it helps you to live with, you know, the things, to live loosely with the things of this world, knowing that we can't take any of it with us. We thank you for this prophecy, Lord. Um, we're blessed to have an anticipation today of your soon return. And we pray that you would build that anticipation within us, that we would, like your word says, have a love for you and a love for your coming. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.